The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Lucas. Oh, hello, Isabel. Lucas, if you could spare a minute. Sure, what is it? Good morning, Mark. Good oh, morning, Miss Isabel. Is this the day Mr. Jupiter's coming in? Mark. Yes, today. Lucas, I need your help. Well, sure, what can I do? Look over there. Oh, the profits, huh? Haven't seen them for a year. Are they giving you trouble? You know that ever since Judge Hanneman agreed to sell me that 40 acres instead of them, they've, they've been trying to scare me into backing down. Well, they found out I advertised back east for a husband. Oh, I see. You're afraid they'll badger him as soon as he gets off the stage? Yes. You talk to Mike about it? I, I want Mr. Jupiter to like North Fork, Lucas. I certainly don't want him to think he needs the marshal's protection here. I see what you mean. Well, what can I do? Well, I'd rather not meet the stage, especially with the Prophet brothers there embarrassing me. Besides, I need the time to prepare a welcoming meal. So if you could explain and bring him by at supper time. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, Isabel. You invite us to your wedding, you have a bargain. Oh, thank you, thank you. I was so afraid. You were the only one who could help. Now, don't you be afraid. The stage is coming. Okay, you be careful that woman spoke for. Growing up, Mark, you learn one thing for sure. You can't judge the size of a man by the size of his mouth. North Fork. If you wait a minute, Mr. Jupiter, I'll get a couple of boys to help haul that trunk down. Oh, much obliged to you, but you don't need it. Pretty heavy. Looks like the Prophet boys finally grabbed the tail of the wrong bear. Welcome to North Fork, Mr. Jupiter. Well, I'm Lucas McCain. Isabel Dyan told me to come down and meet you for it. Well, I'm mighty glad to meet you, Mr. McCain. Who's this other fella here? Your brother? Oh, no, sir. I'm his son, Mark. Mr. Jupiter, how heavy is this trunk? Why, Mark? That's as light as a butterfly's heart. There's nothing in there but my winter duds, 40 or 50 books, and my tools. Yes, sir, I understand there was a mail order groom clear from Ohio on that stage. You, you run into him? I guess that's nobody else but me. Name's Jupiter, John Jupiter. Huh. Nice to meet you, boys. Seems like we got enough beef out here without the shipping it all the way out from Ohio. Yeah. Looks like they dress their beef pretty fancy on the hook, Jess. All right, that's enough, boys. This is your brand of pesky flies? You might call them that, Mr. Jupiter. Now, you know how women are about first impressions, Mr. Jupiter. Isabel just wants to be sure everything is right before you see her housekeeping or taste her cooking. Well, that suits me. I've waited a long time to meet that woman. A little while longer isn't going to hurt me none. Well, just to hold you till her supper, you care to join Mark and myself in the dining room? Well, now, I'll do just that and thanks to you, Mr. McCain. A couple of beefsteaks will whet my appetite for some of Isabel's home cooking. Just as soon as I clean up. We'll meet you in there. Got in their petticoats. Maybe they're lace hankies. I bet it's just chock full of silk stockings. <laughs> <laughs> Those two been a pester me. Who are they? The Prophet boys, Jess and Jim. Fair weather ranchers. They work their ranch a spell and they hit for town and spend their money on trouble. 
Someday they'll buy more than they can pay for. They got any particular reason for bothering me? Oh, yes, they have, John. You see, a while back, Isabel got the rights to a piece of property they wanted real bad. Ever since, they've been trying to make her give up the option. Oh. I thought it was something personal again, me. You know, a lot of folks might think it a little peculiar for a man to travel 2,000 miles to marry up with a woman he never laid his eyes on. Well, John is a dozen wives in North Fork who came here the same way. <laughs> wives, yeah. <laughs> but not husbands. Believe me, Lucas, I had my reasons. Well, you don't have to tell me. I want them. Back in Ohio, there just wasn't any woman that would have me. I only felt half a man without a wife. <laughs> my cousin told me one time, he said, you're so ugly that a healthy horse would turn sick just looking at you. Oh, I whopped him one for saying that, but doggone if he weren't rag. <laughs> this is Isabel now. She pretty. Well, now, John, she's, she's got the prettiest smile I ever saw. Oh. <laughs> That's good enough for me. Well, I'd be scared half to death with a pretty wife. Well, John, I've known her some time. She's a woman who'll last. You two should hit it off fine. Well, she's the only old maid in town the kids won't make fun of. Mark, that's enough. What you and the kids don't know about old maids that fill a lot of books. Well, I didn't mean any harm by it, Paul. I like her. Well, then you be a little more careful how you talk about her. Well, heck, Mr. Jupiter, you're lucky to get some... <laughs> well, what I mean is... Face up to it, son. It's just not your day. Thank you, Mark. Man likes to have his opinion backed up by an expert. Finish up your eating so you can order pie. You know, the one thing he is an expert on, John, is apple pie. <laughs> well, that should be everything. You remember to get the pepper? Oh, sure, Paul. I wouldn't forget the pepper when I'm so far behind in my sneezing, would I? Well, doggone if somebody didn't pull the stop right of you today. <laughs> Look, Paul. Now, that isn't what I call a woolly booger of an outfit, John. <laughs> Shucks, Lucas, you ought to. Cost me most $18. You know, for that kind of money, you'd think they'd furnish a man to wear it. Yeah, I might early, I know. But then I couldn't figure out whether I could walk in this rig or not. So I thought it'd get me a little head start. Well, can you find your way to Isabel's house all right? I strolled by there this afternoon. It's a nice little place. Of course, not big enough for... Uh, say, you fellas wouldn't uh, care to come along now with me, would you? You think we ought to, John? Well, no. It's the kind of thing a man has to do by himself. Uh, well, there's nothing to worry about. That outfit will uh, take all the fight out of her. <laughs> Paul, what makes a man so nervous about women? Now, that's something every man's got to find out himself, son. Your day will come. Isabel like this, what am I gonna do? A profit, boys, huh? Yeah. I'm not a man to lose my patient, but I don't mind telling you those boys are getting to me. Well, look, John, you stay here with Mark. Uh, I'll tell Isabel. Huh? I'd appreciate that. Thank you. 
Mr. Jupiter, did you bust that hitching post? Well, son, I was just a little bit cranky. Welcome, Mr. Jupiter. Isabella, uh, about John Jupiter, I, uh... He's not coming, is he, Lucas? Has he left town? Oh, no, Isabel, not that. He, he's been delayed, is all. He had a little trouble. Trouble? Well, the uh, prophet boy, he's dirtied him up a little. He's bruised a bit and needs to catch his breath and clean up. Prophets. I might have guessed. Lucas, you fetch that man, Jupiter, this instant. Well, you see, Isabel, uh, they poured whiskey all over him. He smells. I don't care if he smells like a saloon on Sunday morning. If he's my man, it's time I started doing for him. You bring him, you hear? Yes, ma'am. North Fork, Mr. Jupiter. I hope you'll be very happy here. I, uh... <laughs> Cost me most $18. Isn't that awful? It looks beautiful, Mr. Jupiter. Give it to me, please. Well, I... I... Take off your coat, please. I'll hang it to air. I think a man ought to eat supper in his shirt sleeves anyway. Uh, Lucas, if you and Mark would care to stay for supper, I think I have chicken and dumplings enough for four. Chicken and dumplings? No, Isabel, we, we've already had our supper, thank you. <laughs> but, no, we didn't. Well, bye, Lucas. Bye, Mark. Thank you ever so much. Care to come in, Mr. Jupiter? Paul, well, we didn't eat supper. I sure wish you'd have taken her up on that invite. Oh, Mark, you know better than that. Isabel doesn't want company the first night she and her intended to have supper together. Yeah, I guess you're right. But that sure is a funny way to order a husband. By mail. Now look, son, she didn't order a husband by mail. They just wrote letters back. Look, Mark, uh, there's a lot of people in this world who are lonely, who want very badly to love and be loved. I don't think we should call it funny. No matter how they go about trying, well, trying not to be lonely anymore. You understand me? Yeah. Let's go. We've got a nice smoked half for our own supper. got a personal business matter that ain't been settled yet. Like I said, step aside. You don't want to get run down. Now, 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 hold on. First this male or groom comes out here to get in our way. Now you're acting to help them both out. Have it your own way. Yeah! Now, Kane, uh, you ain't seen the beginning of trouble yet. look like a perfectly good house to me, John. What are you doing? Well, I'll tell you, Lucas. When I first bought that house, it seemed to suit Isabel right down to a T. But ever since then, somehow, she keeps noticing a thing or two. You know how it is. Well, when a woman stops changing her mind, you better call the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they tell me. Lucas? Yeah? Good, pretty good work, John. I'm driving in my trade. Either I do good or I go hungry. I hope that's not the new buggy you bought. What's left of it? 
When I first got it, it took me and Isabel on a picnic ride. Left it by the road, walked down to the river. When we come back, the horse was loose. My rig was in the rocks like this. Accident? Accidents don't leave no tracks like I found. You tell Micah? Oh, I couldn't prove it was them private boys. It's getting to rankle me, Lucas, plenty. But I'm used to that. It's just that last day or two, it seems to have come between me and Isabel. She expects me to get rid of them boys before we get married. Well, I'd say that's fair enough, wouldn't you? That's fair. I'm afraid to, Lucas. Afraid? A big man like you? I almost killed a man with these back in Ohio. Now, suppose I was to hurt one of them boys. Maybe even kill him. You think Isabel's still going to marry me then? No, sir. Best thing for me to do is to stay out of fights. But I'm darned if I do, and I'm darned if I don't. Well, John, you, you may have to fight whether you like it or not. Looks like Jez Prophet's not going to let up till he runs you out of town. Well, I won't go. I wouldn't leave either if I were you, Mr. Jupiter. Huh. You going the hard way? Mind if I bum a ride? No, come on, hop in. You seen Mark? Half an hour ago, he's on Minnie Grant's front porch telling how to bake a blueberry pie. Oh. Well, he's a shade better at eating than baking, but I'm sure Minnie knows that. Thanks. Oh, uh, Mr. Jupiter, it's burning. It's burning. What's burning, Mark? Mr. Jupiter's house. Mr. Where were they running to like that? Seems like they went off to a fire. Yeah, it seemed like they were in awful hurry. <laughs> fire, huh? Hot and handsome, so they say. <laughs> Smell this, Lucas. Smell it. That's coal oil. Son, Mr. Jupiter's about to descend on his tormentors like a cyclone in a field of corn. I wouldn't want to try and stop him. <clears throat> Maybe now you know who they're dealing with, huh? I wish I could have been there to see the look on his face. Oh, uh, you're never going to see him again. It wouldn't surprise me when he don't ride on that next stage for Ohio. <laughs> Looks like coal oil. Maybe. Rub your nose in it. Hey! It is coal oil. Just one thing I'm sorry for. What's that? Didn't get to see that fire. Must have been a real woolly booger. Jim! Oh, Jim! Up. Up here, Jess. What in time are you doing up there? It's where he flanged me, Jess. Help me down. Oh, what good you been? I might just well leave you up there. That ain't no ordinary man, Jess. Get me down and we'll make tracks. Now, oh, if we get run out now, we're gonna have to keep on going, because he'll give us the horse slap from here to Denver. And we can still drive him out, don't you worry. Trouble is, we've been going about it the wrong way. Get out 
out here. Close the door, Jim. You're burning a burn. Where's that poor excuse for a man you drag out here for a husband? He's not here. Didn't ask, was he here? Ask, where was he? Got a bone to pick with him. He tore my only other shirt. Oh, scum. Scum. Not fit to wipe his shoes, either of you. You live like pigs and you act like pigs. Well, where's he at? Over at his house. Where his house used to be. With Lucas McCain. When's he coming over here? I don't know. I'm still cleaning up over there. Haven't you done enough to him? I know half enough. Now listen. Yes. McCain's kid, come. Keep your mouth closed about us being here. Mr. Jupiter says we can eat as much as he can bring, as soon as he can bring it. All right, Mark. Just tell him I'll be right over. You loco? What do you want to do that for? Just came to me. That boy will go screaming that I'm over here and that big man will come a-running with a gun in his hand. There won't be nothing for me to do but shoot him. Self-defense. Who's where, son? Oh, just Prophet at Isabel's. He must have done something. She's crying. Hold it, John. I wouldn't want to see you go running wild with a rifle in your hand. You'd be too easy a mark. Lucas, they tied me to a post and ruined my $18 suit. They wrecked my buggy. They burned down my house. Now they're badgering the only woman that'll have me. And by thunder, I'm going to drive them clear to Canada. Look, it's not Isabel they're after. It's you, John. You ever used a rifle before? No. Well, this is a poor time to start. Why didn't he go with them, Paul? I don't want this rifle to spark any shooting mark. But suppose he needs help. Maybe you're right. Yeah, here he comes. When he goes for me, I'll shoot him. You keep an eye peeled for McCain. Boys, let's see what I'm serving in the main cell for dinner tonight, shall we? I'll get going. You're out. Well, it ain't no more than a bee sting, Isabel. I'll, I, I'll be around to clean up here tomorrow. You will not. We've dawdled long enough. We're getting married tomorrow. Now you come in the house. We're going to fix up that arm. You were right, Paul. That mean little of stuff sure does work. Come on, son. Let's go home.